So you're telling me these idiots a bike. Your league mates at it again. Acting up. I'm about to I'm about to lose my, I'm about to take my t's out. Beat that out, Ike. This is five more rookies that we're gonna let your idiot league mates draft in your fantasy football rookie drafts. This is rapidly approaching. Right after the NFL draft, most people dive into their rookie drafts. We're excited. There's a lot of hype, especially right after the NFL draft. We love everybody, right? I don't care if the dudes on this list get first round draft capital. Might care a little bit. But for right now, they're guys that we don't want a part of, right? They got too much hype. They're big name school guys or just big name guys all together. Therefore, we're letting our league mates be the morons, be the idiots that reach up, that succumb to the hype. Not us, not I, never I, never was, never will be. That's our attitude for 2022. We did this video in its entirety with the first five players. Y'all told me to run a bike. Go with five more players. That's what this video is today. Five more players, five more rookies that we are going to let your idiot league mates draft in your dynasty rookie drafts 2022 fantasy football. Before you draft, you got to tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. So we're going to look at current ADPs of these five rookies from both playerprofiler.com and keeptradecut.com, all right? So because last time, you know, people were like, no one's taking these guys anyways. I'm like, listen, I'm trying to give you the most precise data I possibly can that could actually be useful to your ass because there's not a lot of actual good, quantifiable, useful rookie data out there. It just It's just not available yet. The industry is not big enough. Y'all are not working hard enough. You're not pulling enough friends in. You're not pulling your mother in. You're not pulling your girlfriends in. You're not pulling your girlfriend's mother in. I want girlfriend's mothers in my dynasty league. Do you understand? Only then will we get accurate ADP data. But I know for sure that this is at least accurate enough because the first guy up on this list is Isaiah Spiller, the running back out of Texas A&M, currently going off the board seventh overall, the 107 in player profiler, ninth overall, the RB3 for both spots, 109 overall, keep trade cut. Okay, that's a problem. Now, I'm not going to go on long about Isaiah Spiller because we at BDGE have buried Isaiah Spiller up to this point. I think we're the reason that the ADP for him has started to shift downwards to begin with. My good friend Noah Hills at No More Party on Twitter has gone on many, many a tangents about Isaiah Spiller and why he's not the player that we thought he was. And that was retrospect when the offseason started. A lot of people had him as their RB1, like the 101 overall, which was always a fucking problem. And, you know, if you were one of those players, I've got news for you. You were the idiot in your league that we are talking about in this video right now. Isaiah Spiller is a big name guy. He's also a big player out of Texas A&M. Did some good things at SEC. When you start to look a little bit more into the numbers, when you start to look into the athletics, when you start to look at the NFL draft buzz around him, which there is a lack of, that's all I'm going to say. But again, you, know, you can look at any of the five, six individual videos that we've made on Isaiah Spiller up to this point as to why we're going to let this big name guy fall to your league mates. In the first round, we are not taking a lick at Mr. Isaiah Spiller. So I let my man Noah handle that. But as a team, we have been absolutely dominating the rookie landscape up to this point. Two or three months straight videos every single day. So you know we are on our shit. You know who else is on our shit? Motherfucking prize picks, man. Prize picks has swept us off our feet. Prize Picks has signed BDGE, Big Dog's Gotta Eat, to an exclusive partnership for the 2022 season. Their platform is incredible. Their product is amazing. If you have not looked at Prize Picks, if you have not downloaded the app, if you have not checked out the website, prizepicks.com, you're fooling yourself. It's the single best place to play these prop games. They have futures up right now for NFL. So you can go take. Derrick Henry under over 1,400 rushing yards for the year. Parlay it with DeAndre Hopkins over under some line, whatever they have up there right now. And because we're partnered with them, we've got the dealio of the century. We've been working very hard behind the scenes on our exclusive rookie draft guide. I know it's a little late. I know your rookie draft start right at the NFL draft. We are trying very mercilessly to have this shit live by next week. And what that means 
This is normally a product we just sell, right? We're just like, you got to give us all your fucking money. Give us your Ethereum. Give us your Bitcoin and we'll give you the goods. We'll give you the info. We go deep. Every single fantasy relevant prospect, it's like 60, 65 at this point, we have in-depth write-ups of shit that you're not going to find elsewhere, right? Everybody knows these rookie profiles, these rookie draft guides. And you're like, yeah, we have every profile. We have rankings and we have rankings. We have rankings. We get it. You have fucking rankings. Everyone has rankings. No one goes in depth like we do on these profiles. I guarantee you that. You're going to read them and be like, these are fucking amazing. They're funny. They're informative. They're entertaining. They're, I could read them while I shit. Like they're, they are the real deal. Okay. And this is something that we would normally sell to you, but prize picks has given us the opportunity to give it to you guys if you sign up for their platform. So you're going to head over to prize picks and you're going to use the promo code BDGE. When you do that, not only are they going to match your deposit. So if you deposit 20, you're going to have $40 to play with on their site. You are also going to get access to the BDGE Rookie Draft Guide for free by doing so. The Rookie Draft Guide is not live yet, okay? So we're working on getting it live, but as soon as it does, but as soon as we do, we're going to give you access. You will get an email from us or from Prize Picks letting you know that you have gained access. You'll have to go onto the website and you'll create a, an account and a password, but you'll have access for free. So we're going to go to Prize Picks. We're going to deposit at least $10, 10, 20, 50, 100. We're going to use a promo code BDGE, which is going to double your deposit. And then you're going to get access to the rookie guide in time. Prize picks the GOAT. Second dude, who are you? Second dude in whom you are letting your idiot league mage draft in your rookie draft this year. It's another SEC player at the wideout position. It is John Mechie at Alabama. Currently going off the board. Player profiler has him 29th overall. Wide receiver 12, 305. Keep trade cut has him all the way up at 22nd overall. Wide receiver 11, 210. I know. Everybody wants to hype up these Alabama wide receivers. It's happened every year, running five straight years. Everyone's going to compare Jameson Williams to Henry Ruggs to Devontae Smith, to Jerry Judy, et cetera, et cetera. He's just fast. That's his best trait. If you're going to compare anyone to Henry Ruggs, it's not Jameson Williams. It's John Mechie. All right. My my comp for John Mechie is probably better. I mean, I mean, it's hard not to be better than fucking Henry Ruggs. Um, my comp for him is is like Russell Gage, but a little bit more explosive, a little bit faster. I mean, it's really easy to hype up the Bama wide receivers if you try hard enough. But if you look at Mechie's profile, like he along with most of the Alabama wide receivers, a lot of them have the same like analytical profile. The things that the very like base, low hanging fruit kind of stuff that dynasty fantasy football fucking experts literally just quote tweet 50 times over again and pretend they do anything um we look at college dominator don mechie 29th percentile college yards per reception 15th percentile big red flag for me college target share that's where things rose up he did have the breakout year but his breakout age didn't come until after he was 21 years old so a lot of red flags just kind of checkered all over his profile to begin with and we didn't get a 40 time for john mechie because he tore his ACL at the end of the year, much like Jameson Williams did. I'm not worried about the ACL, like, in that entirety by itself. Uh, from what I've read and what I've researched, his ACL uh, recovery is going perfectly fine. He should be good to go by the upcoming year, uh, ahead of schedule, all that kind of shit. But just objectively, this is a fucking scientific fact. If you tear your ACL over the next two years, you have a 20 to 25% chance of uh, of tearing the other ACL. It's a weird fact, but it's a, it's a real doctorate fact, okay? When you look at John Mechie, he's he's slender, uh, sort of like Devontae Smith, same kind of like body frame a little bit, maybe a little bit thicker. Um, long speed for sure. I didn't need to see him run to know what kind of player he was in terms of just fast, pure speed. He's very smooth too. He's got natural, natural hands as a catcher. But my problem is I think he's going to be a guy who plays a specific role at the next level. He's not a guy that wins on the outside. He's not like a dominant one-on-one -on -one player, can play against press coverage, can play against man coverage. It's just not his game. He's going to be, like I said, Russell Gage, like a slot wide receiver that could get peppered with targets, but very rare that slot wide receivers just perfectly get you know placed right into an offense and they start seeing eight to ten targets it just very very rarely happens like i said he's a, he's a role player with some juice at the next level in my opinion and when you have that type of speed right one of the red flags i see is like he's someone really really fast okay yards per reception is he a playmaker downfield is he an explosive playmaker downfield college yards per reception 11.9 in the 15th percentile so i wanted to see you know his targets what he did with the outside play etc cetera, etc cetera. uh only 16.4 percent of his targets were deep targets last year. So 20 plus yards downfield that ranked 204th out of 237 qualified NCAA wide receivers His 8.43 yards per route run on those deep passes ranked 196th. 
So the volume was low and the efficiency on that volume was low. When you compare it to his teammate, Jamison Williams, you're looking at a target share of 27.7%. So that is uh, a whole 11.3% higher target share in terms of what percentage of his targets were deep. And on those deep targets, Jamison, Mill uh, Jamison Williams' yards per route run, 20.97. Absurd. That is over 12 more yards per route run on deep plays. And when you just look at Mechie as a player, right, I wanted to break it down in terms of like what he did as a receiver, but then broken up at the slot level versus the outside level, right? His targets, he had a few more on the outside than he did on the slot, but the overall takeaway here should be that bottom line. Yards per route run total was 2.4. In the slot, it was 3.5 or 3.6 if you round up. On the outside, it was 1.8. The overarching theme here is that you guys are going to pretend that you love John Mechie. Most of y'all have not, not even watched a fucking game of John Mechie, but we'll pretend that you love him because that's just how like rookie and dynasty leagues work. Mechie is a slot guy. My problem with like banking on slot guys is almost, it's like the same as loving a pass catching running back. It's like, sure, they can do well, and it's possible that they fit into the perfect fucking situation with the perfect dump off quarterback or the perfect losing record where you need the target. Like, it's just so many things need to break right in order for this player to break right. And Mechie seems like a guy to me. And I watched the film and I just wasn't blown away by any means. I don't think he's an outside receiver that can win. So that means he needs to be in a situation that makes him win rather than a guy who wins regardless of the situation. Um, you know, I think it's possible that he could be like a lesser version of Amon Ross St. Brown or Tyler Boyd. And those guys have made a living doing just that. Uh, but I don't think he's anywhere near that player. When you look at what BetUS has to offer right now in terms of his overall draft spot, over 64 and a half for where John Mechie will go in the NFL draft, the exact same odds. So him being a third round pick is just as likely as being a second round pick, which means if he drops into the third round, I mean, hard to get really excited about a receiver at that level. Uh, but you can go smash that line right now on BetUS if you use the link below. Uh, promo code BDGE, you're going to get a 100 dollar deposit match on your $100 deposit and they have all these different lines up for these rookie wide receivers which is pretty pretty awesome right now it's fun because not a lot of places have that anyone in the United States can participate on BetUS as well so John Mechie's number two on the list number three on this list Hassan Haskins man the running back out of Michigan now he's not getting drafted very highly keep trade cut has him 39th overall so you're talking about running back uh 17 I believe at the end of the third round, early fourth round. I mean, he's he's a Michigan running back, so I think those guys tend to get hype. And I've heard some hype uh, about him. It's like, this is a guy that, you know, sets the tone. I thought that was funny as hell. Hayden Winks said, Hassan Haskins will set the tone. That, very true. Very true. He, You know, he's – Hassan Haskins is like the least inspiring runner of all time. Like – uh, that's wrong. He he's he's low key like the most inspiring runner because, like you said, he's he sets the tone. But as a runner, like watching him, oh my god, I want to fucking fall asleep. And then he, you know, he'll take your head off in in one of two ways. He's either smashing his face right into your face, and therefore your head flies off, or your head snaps off because you continue to fall asleep from fucking watching this guy run. He's thick, uh, and he's actually kind of smooth in the passing game, but. His start-stop speed is like a fucking dial-up mode of man. He looks like he's running in molasses. He is, he is a thumper. There's no one I'm more confident that will get you 0-1 to one yards in this class. If you give him a carry, he will get you that one yard, even if you need four. He is very strong, but he is not fast. Uh, he can get momentum and gets tough to bring down, but that's just not a fantasy player I want. I don't care about guys that are tough and will grind out three to four yards. Like That does not fucking matter. He's just not a creative or exciting runner whatsoever. I started diving into the uh, more analytical numbers to get a, a bigger picture of this. 6'1", 220, 288 touches as a senior. That's big time. But 4.9 yards per carry, uh, I mean, that's like the definition of a fucking cigar, man. You're just a walking cloud of dust. In terms of elusiveness, Haskins ranked 127th out of 180 running backs in missed tackles force rate per Sports Info Solutions. 102nd in elusive rating per PFF. For a bigger back, his yards after contact per attempt of 2.7 ranked 95th. Not a good look for him. And we knew he lacked burst. We knew he was not a guy who was going to be ripping off 10, 15, 20-yard runs. Uh, but he ranked outside of the top 100 NCAA running backs in terms of both 10-plus yard run rate and 15-plus yard run rate. It's a dagger twist. Listen, like he can make his way onto the field on third downs. 
He did great. He he graded very highly in terms of pass catching or pass uh, pass blocking, and pretty good in terms of like running passing routes or whatever. He's sneaky good in the passing game. That's what I'll say. It's just it's just not there as a runner for Hassan Haskins. He'll be like a six round pick who people like do do the whole Larry Roundtree thing over again, who's terrible and doesn't do anything and just literally runs for two yards. And people be like, oh, such a good two. Like shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. All right, Hassan Haskins is the shut the fuck up guy for me this year. So don't draft Hassan Haskins. All these types of in depth analytical numbers. We have much more in-depth on every single profile, on every single rookie in the draft guide coming to y'all. So, again, make sure you go sign up, prizepicks.com. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit, and we will retroactively retrograde, retro mercuries and retrograde the fucking draft guides in Metro, Retro, fucking Metro, boom, and want some more. I don't know what's happening anymore, but we're going to keep running it. Number four, prizepicks.com, promo code BDGE. Max Borgi, bourgeois, running back Washington state okay uh no one really likes him anymore i'm gonna be honest with you but like last summer there were there were like actual whispers of him being the next christian mccaffrey he this kid is he's well known for his pass catching he's a little white kid uh you know he's kind of jacked so he's not like little little kind of like christian mccaffrey but people know him for catching a bazillion passes in college great 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 pass catcher all right and more often than not i will look at a player's profile and be like okay he caught 25 30 passes in college he is more than suitable enough to do it at the next level Right, he's fine. I don't need to look too far in depth at that. And like I said, Borgi is known for his pass catching numbers. He caught fifty three passes as a freshman, eighty six fucking passes as a sophomore. But that was under Mike Leach, man. If you know anything about this Mike Leach system, it is that every running back gets fed and fed and fed and fed. They're like on my six hundred pound loser, whatever that TV show is. They're fatter than that when it comes to running back targets and receptions. You you look at the history, okay? So what I did was I went back through the Mike Leach years, the leading running back in that backfield, their number of receptions, and do you fucking know him now? Okay, let's play a little game of do you fucking know this running back now, right? Because at the time, you see, oh, this guy's so good at a pass as a pass catcher, he's going to carve out a role at the next level. Turns out it's not predictive. In fact, it is predictive just in the negative fucking sense. If you were a dominant pass catcher under Mike Leach, guess what? It ain't going to fucking work for you. 2013, Marcus Mason, 52 receptions. 2014, Jamal Morrow, 61 receptions. 2015, Keith Harrington, 43 receptions. Then James Williams. Y'all remember James Williams. He got a little bit of hype. Turns out, didn't fucking matter. He led Mike Leach's team, the backfield, the running backs, in reception for the next three years, 48, 71, 83. And then Max Borgi took over. And that's where he went into play, okay? So the fact that he caught a bajillion passes in college under Mike Leach has literally no predictiveness to what he's going to do at the NFL level, okay? So if people are going to get excited about him being a good pass catcher, I've got news for you. Let those fucking idiots draft him in your rookie drafts. And the last, last guy up on this list, number five. The other four were clear as day, okay? And so are these glasses from Felix Gray. God damn, that was a good rhyme. FelixGray.com. So where are going to find these beautiful blue light blocking glasses? I have nine screens up right now. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight if I don't block my face, if I don't block my eyes from the blue light here. It stops you from producing melatonin. It gives your eyes. I'm in here working fucking 92 hours a day. That's what we're doing in the headquarters. I didn't get an office to go sleep. I didn't get an office to not work. I got an office to look at screens all day. And Felix Gray protects my eyes and my brain and my face and everything from Losing my vision and losing... Okay, that's not a doctor term. Don't say I told you that they'll protect you from losing your vision. But Felix Gray right now has a 15% off co- uh, coupon, BDGE15. They never do sales, but it is their birthday, okay? It is their birthday. This is a big sale for them. So if you go to FelixGray.com, if you go to GetFelixGray.com forward slash BDG, the link will be the first one down there. You're going to use promo code BDGE15. You're going to get 15% off your purchase, which is huge because these are luxury glasses, and they can get a little expensive, but well worth it. One of my favorite purchases I've ever made in the tech realm. Okay, protect your eyes, protect your health, protect the blue light. If you're someone who's on TikTok all day, follow us at BDGE double underscore. If you're just watching our TikToks all day, which very, you know, like I don't blame you whatsoever. They're pretty fucking good. Then you need to protect your eyes at night because you're not going to be able to fall asleep after you do it. So go get your Felix Gray's BDGE 15 for 15% off. Happy Happy fucking birthday, Felix Gray. I'd go out and if you were a person, I'd drink some tequila with you, but fortunately you're not. Maybe I'll just sit here and stare at your website and drink tequila by myself. Jerome Ford might be by himself for a long time. 
after his rookie contract. So I don't know how long he's going to last in the league. Look at Jerome Ford right now, getting picked in between the second and third round of rookie drafts. He's RB7 on player profile. He's RB11 in keep trade cut. He is an unimpressive runner as a whole. He has some interesting parts about him. There's a lot of guys in this class that are like a sum of their parts where they have a couple good traits here and there that, you know, in the perfect situation might end up adding up to be, you know, a good enough number that hits a mark. But when I look at Ford, he needs a good offensive line. He's goal line opportunities. He needs, he needed more size. I thought he was going to be 215, 218 pounds. He's 210 pounds. I thought he was going to be uh, a lot of things that he ended up not being. He did run the 40 very, very fast. I still think that, um, I don't need those right now because it's during the day, but in a couple hours, as soon as the night, as soon as the sun goes down, those things are fucking glued to my face. I think that everybody at the combine got an extra like half a tenth of a second. That's just not, this is not a, just a whole Jerome Ford spiel, but this is just in general. The combine was a fucking fugazi this year. Regardless, so he, he ran fast enough, uh, four, four, six at 210 pants, pa- pants that gave him a good way to adjust his speed score. Okay. One of my problems with him is that, you know, he couldn't even sniff playing time while he was at Alabama. He transfers to Cincinnati and he plays in the American conference. So he couldn't get on the field at Alabama against real SEC competition. And then what we saw in 2021 might have been the reason why. Because when he was then tasked to run up against legit college defenses, Ford shrunk. You look at his numbers against only Power 5 schools. Among 184 qualified NCAA running backs, Jerome Ford ranked 148th in yards per carry, 3.9. 2.3 yards after contact per attempt, which was 136th. Forced a missed tackle against Power 5 conferences on 8.6% of his attempts, 167th ranked out of 184. And when you compare those to the season averages, all those are so much lower than when he's playing against the American Conference teams. Wow, shocking, right? Statistically, there is almost nothing that jumps off the page when it comes to Jerome Ford. His missed tackle force uh, attempt rank just overall is like 80th in the class. 7% of his carries went for 15-plus yards, which is 85th in the class. Not a breakaway guy. Again, he just needs his overall lucidness is very, very average. I just think he's not a he's, – he's very much a jag. He's very much just a guy – where anybody in the NFL as a Jag can succeed for like eight weeks, 10 weeks, maybe even a full season in the perfect situation. But you put Jerome Ford in a shitty situation. He gets drafted by the Houston Texans or some shit. You're, ne- you're never hearing from this dude again. All right. So let him get a little bit of hype from being on Cincinnati, from being on this good team, from getting some pre buzz hype uh, prior to the combine, et cetera. Let someone else take Jerome Ford. Take one of these other bigger backs, more explosive, more college production in a better conference, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and on and on, but we have to end this video eventually. So a few things I want to leave you with. Jerome Ford, Hassan Haskins, John Mechie, Max Borgi. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, to be honest. Isaiah Spiller. Five players in which you are letting your idiot league mates draft. We will put the first version of this video up on the screen right now. The original five rookies to let your idiot league mates draft so go watch that if you haven't yet we'll put that in the link we're also going to put some other things in the link prize picks go check out the website deposit 10 bucks use promo code bdg felix gray go cop yourself some blue light glasses use promo code bge15 bet us go hit that john mechie over 64 and i actually think it's he's probably gonna get drafted early i would say under 64 and a half because he's an alabama wide receiver bdg you deposit 100 there you're gonna get 100 to play with Boom. We don't care how you we don't care how you spread the love around. Just support the fucking brand by hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing to the channel, and go signing up for one of these fucking partners of ours. All right? I love you. I'm out of here. Bye.